guys. Grave here today. I'd like to talk about the best console settings for Hogwarts Legacy. There's a few things in game you can change that makes the experience a lot better personally for me. Now you may want to tweak some of these to fit your play style, but first of all, let's talk about the display options. Now, depending on what you're playing on, whether you're playing on a monitor or TV, these may change. I play on a 144 hertz monitor here on PS5, so I'm playing at 120 FPS, but um, when I'm playing the game, I prefer balance. That's going to give you a rendering mode aiming for a balance between, you know, good graphics and good FPS quality. Now, if you want to go with something like, uh, you know, more graphics, uh, you could go with a fidelity kind of mode to give you a higher graphic quality. Or you could go with something like performance if you're wanting higher FPS. That's going to knock the game down to around, you know, 1080p, but you're going to get more frames out of that. I can still get really high frames, like I said, with the balance, but it's going to depend on, like I said, what you're playing on. Your TV or your monitor may or may not be able to pull as many frames or as good of graphics. Uh, it will let you know once you change them, it will kind of check your, you know, what you're playing on to make sure that it does work correctly with your uh, specific thing that you're playing on. Also, you can go, go to the image calibration if you like to have your HDR on on your console. You can turn the cap frame rate on or off. I have it on right now. I keep consistent frames. I did turn it off and notice there was a bit of an issue. It would dip sometimes. I have the motion blur on. Of course, that's just personal preference, but that does look cool to me in single player games. Not a thing that I usually like in other games, but single player, I definitely like it. Depth of field is on. Uh, the only thing I turned off here was the film grain. I'm not a really big fan of that, but some of you may like it. Now, when it comes to the sound, pretty much however you want to use this, you know, uh, if you want your subtitles on, things like that, music volume, you can kind of choose that. Just depending on exactly what you're using to play with, you know, whether you're using headphones, soundbar, TV speakers, whatever the case may be. When it comes to the gameplay options, these are some of the things that I really felt like helped out a lot when I changed them. Uh, everything here you can kind of see is, like I said, the wireless controller vibration is on. I have it turned off in the system settings automatically, so... I don't have any vibration anyway, but you can turn that off or on depending on what you like. Didn't touch any of these. These are all just set to default. Now when it comes to the motion sensor function sensitivity, I have this set to 0.99. Camera sensitivity to 1.5. Aiming sensitivity 1.01. Camera acceleration to 1.03. Aiming acceleration is 1. And follow camera speed is 1.23. I felt like the game was a little, a little bit sluggish to begin with when I first started playing. And these camera settings seem to help out a lot. Uh, and kind of the aiming acceleration settings helped out a lot. So when I'm moving around the camera, my aiming, everything feels a lot more fluid. When it comes to the controller options, of course, you know, you can change some of this if you want to go into your actual accessibilities in the PlayStation. You can change some of the button mapping, but I just left all this as default. When it comes to the accessibility options in game, there's a few things you can change here. I turn the camera shake completely off. Of course, you can have the menu reader on or off if you if you prefer. And if you are colorblind, there are colorblind, uh, colorblind settings. The toggle aim mode is off. The spell cast mode is off. The stick switch is off. And left-handed is off. My camera dead zone is still at zero. You may want to turn this up um, depending on your controller. I'm not really sure if your controller sticks are going out. If you're going to notice any drift with the camera dead zone, I'm not sure if it's still the same as it would be with like a stick drift with, you know, just a stick dead zone in some other games. But you may want to tinker with that if you're noticing a little bit of drift. Uh, the cursor sensitivity is at one. Of course, it's going to be your sensitivity right here when you're going through the menus. Uh, everything else here, I pretty much left at default besides turning off this high contrast gameplay and text. Um, if you're having that issue, I did make a video talking about if you have that issue where your character is blue. It is the high contrast gameplay. There should be a fix for that soon. There's not just yet. Um, hopefully, eventually, they'll get a fix for that in game so you can have that high contrast gameplay on until it makes the graphics and everything look a little bit better. But if you have that on right now, you may experience some issues in game. They're, your character, like I said, just being blue when you're walking around in the world. So if you turn that off, that will fix that problem. Also, uh, kind of the last year, the user interface options. This is kind of left up to you exactly how you want to, you know, change this if you want more of an immersive kind of feel you could change some of the hud and the mini map to make it kind of where you're just walking around discovering things without a, a map at all that would be more of an immersive experience but i think the main thing here to really focus on is going to be 
those gameplay options and changing these sensitivities here to make the game feel a lot more fluid. Anyway, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Of course, if you liked the video, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.